Do you have a book on Pavlov and Schrodinger? And the bookshop keeper says, hmm, it rings a bell, but I don't know if it's there or not. Ah, feels so good to finally voice another poem. Welcome to Polina's Pages. And my yearly wrap up. My name is Polina, and here on this channel, we talk about the normal booktube things, but also I try to help you with literature papers. This wrap up, I'm going to be talking about some of the books that I've read this year, except for December because it's not over yet. Yep, the year suddenly has 11 months. What magic! Do watch out for my December wrap-up coming soon! Right around New Year's, I get into a special mood, which basically means that all I do is spend time with my family and with a book. And the speed of my reading depends on the book that I'm reading. For example, non-fiction and or poetry books will take me typically maybe around a month, at least maybe two weeks sometimes, depends on the book, and non-depressing contemporary reads will take me about one, two, three days. I don't ever force myself to read, so the amount is like varying so some months will have like four books and some months will have 20 plus books depends on the mood that I was in when I was reading and the genre that I was reading but yeah enough chit chat let's get started so how this is going to work is I'm going to display the books that I've read the month and only talk about my favorites because otherwise it's going to take too much time and maybe I will complain about some books that I didn't like overall I've read 147 books this year so as much as I sorry that screen was very on point. That's my baby brother. So as much as I would like to talk about all of them, I just can't. It's gonna take too much time and I don't think anyone wants to watch like two hours of me talking about every single book I've read. It's gonna take a while, but yeah, I'll direct you to some of my yearly wrap-ups instead. I started this channel around two months ago, so there's really not that many yearly wrap-ups, but I've linked them down in the description box, so do feel free to check them out. Also, just please ask me in the comments if you're interested in any of them. So, January, a trashy month. And not only because I was forced to read Never Let Me Go in School, I'm still mad at my English teacher for that. Uh, so a lot of the books I borrowed out of the library, which was good, but the books overall, they just weren't that great. My favorite would have to be The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, a real January jewel, and the movie was great too. Honestly, I don't think anyone hasn't heard of this book, and I remember that on Halloween, my geography teacher dressed up as Arthur Dent. He came in in a pink bathrobe and a pink towel, and that was so iconic. He was an amazing teacher. I still don't know geography really well, but I know more than I used to before. Shame he left the school. He was really good at geography and an amazing teacher, but yeah. So let's just all take a minute to admire fully this geography teacher whose name you don't even know because I don't want to get him in trouble if anyone sees this. Okay, so The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is a science fiction. So creative, I know, but seriously, it is a really good introduction to the genre, so I would really recommend it. It's just a great book to cheer yourself up with. February, I read even less books than I've read in January, but my favorite out of those was Legend. Yes, totally not choosing very popular books right now. Legend by Mary Lou deserves so much hype, just like Four Dead Queens, just like Queen of the Starlight. By the way, Emily, don't know if you're watching this or not, but I'm still waiting for you to return me that signed edition of Four Dead Queens. Anyway, Legend did steal my breath away and made me fall for a cliche. Proof that you can get away with some things if your writing is amazing, and honestly, it was. Legend is really good. March. Better. You know, you notice how each month is getting better and better, right? Well, as much as I loved Educated by Tara Westover, my favorite would have to be The Magical Language of Others. which deserves just so, so much more attention. It's a beautiful and raw memoir with like letters and it's actual letters between a girl and her mother. And it's really like, it's really emotional. The writing is as graceful as a swan and the book is just so wonderful. Now in March, something else happened. I started my bookstagram and oh my God, look at me now. 2.5K, that's so crazy. I'm so 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 grateful to all of you you really helped me grow and i managed to form so many beautiful connections with all of you we talked about books we talked about life we talked about everything and it just means so much to me to have your support wonderful conversations and so many arcs received because of you thank you i have so many reasons to smile because because of you i have people to discuss books with which is just so great i don't have many reader friends in real life which is a shame but um every time i open my mouth and talk about a book i'm pretty sure they to kill me so really thankful to all of you for the opportunity but also so grateful to my friends for 
not killing me by now I'm not even sure they're watching this video because you know they're not really into booktube and stuff so yeah but I'll make sure to call them and tell them all of that I limit the amount of times we see each other out of school because of the pandemic obviously so I'm gonna have to call them and not tell them in person bro I do hope I'm getting all these months right because I remember that I've said May instead of April so many times in bookstagram by accident so do just look at the dates of the books that I'm displaying here so thanks Goodreads also another thing is I started using Goodreads properly this year aka i started blogging all the books that i read on there except for russian ones those are kind of difficult to log on there and i've started actually uploading some reviews on goodreads which was great too i still don't really know how to connect with friends of goodreads it's really difficult for me i don't understand how it works so please do bear with me but in april i read a lot of shakespeare plays so although i really love the merchant of venice and much ado about nothing those are like my favorite shakespeare plays of all time and yeah, I did talk about Shakespeare at some point this year, so cards maybe or description, I'll figure it out. Yeah, um, the book that I really, really loved in April was The Nightingale, which is a historical fiction that I picked up. When I tell you I sobbed, you should imagine rivers of tears. This is a phenomenal read about Paris when it was like nazi occupied it's a tale of two sisters so family connections love an impeccably written setting i would really recommend this for everyone it holds a lot of action but at the same time explores emotions so well so like the history and stuff it's all there and i just thought it was a really creative take and a beautiful story and i think it holds a little something for everyone may a spark of light look i adore ninth house because it got me into dark academia it's written by lee Bertigo, so because of the dark academia it got me to explore so many authors and so many so many great books yeah we'll talk about that later but honestly a spark of light it was brilliant outstanding One of the best books I've read of all time. So Judy Pickle writes about this abortion clinic. A shooter, a lone shooter comes into the abortion clinic and everything is so tense. I guarantee you won't be able to sit still. You will literally be f fidgeting like all the time. It's just so tense and it's so well written. It won't allow you to put it down for a single second. And one more thing, it presents the pro-life and pro-choice views so well. You're still free to make your choice. It's like very detached, but all the characters are explored just in like in minuscule detail you will get to know each and every one of them and it's a very educational although fictional read so i would recommend it to anyone who wants to know more about abortion as a topic it's just a really really good book june summer started so suddenly i have a lot more books to choose from um it's a very difficult choice to make so i'm going to choose one adult and one young adult out of adult i'm going to have to choose miracle creek and this is a book that i wish more people talked about because at some point it was really hyped up but then people weren't talking about it anymore really soon so that's kind of sad it's a thriller slash mystery thing but it just has so many interesting themes explored in it yeah the description right now the pace is very slow but it has this unique approach to kind of describing the atmosphere of each scene I can still recall the emotions it left you with and I know my explanations of what the book about is like zero at this current moment but that's why I've put the Goodreads screenshots so you can pause and read while I talk now the YA category vicious and vengeful my first V.E. Schwab read and I just won't stop talking about it it was delicious basically it's about these two guys who used to be friends but now they're enemies I know right but they're trying to find this link between death and superpowers like near death experiences the morally gray characters the plot that will have you hooked I have a shirt with Victor and Eli and I just cannot wait enough for the third book V.E. Schwab where is it I can't wait I can't wait July again was the difficult choices there's two categories again so for adult as much as I loved Miss Bourne I think it would be considered more adult I know it's like YA but like yeah it's on the border um so as much as I loved Miss Bourne for adult and I think it's just a really good series it it is overhyped but then again I would recommend it to a lot of people so that's good um, it's just well written to be honest. In terms of adult books, I would choose Pachinko for this. So it's historical fiction again. At first it's set in Korea in 1911 and then in Japan. It follows eight decades, I believe eight, 
And as you've expected, family, love, identity, death, it's all in here. I really enjoyed this read in terms of connecting to my heritage as well. I am half Korean, so it was really interesting for me as well as obviously like a great thing to explore my heritage more in terms of this important and this interesting history of my country. The secret history and if we were villains. It's really hard to choose because the secret history, I can't stop thinking about it. It's like, it's honestly, it's a very difficult book to talk about because there are so many issues with it while if we were villains had me hooked from the first page so i would have to choose if we were villains but i do think about the secret history constantly it comes up a lot but both of these reads really motivated me to study as for the secret history henry and francis i don't know maybe you're just carrying my entire love for this book on your backs because they were so interesting as characters and i feel like they were really good explorations of scholars and like kind of the young desire to learn it's very difficult to explain august mexican gothic this book is so undeserving of the hate so it's basically a story of this young woman who arrives to her sister to help her because she's ill and then when she does she finds that the husband is even weirder than they thought he was and the house is like Ugh, and a bunch of strange things start to happen but it's basically because the husband is a controlling piece of people complain that this isn't a very horror genre kind of book but i think it made the book unique to be honest and what made it even more interesting and special and i hope that this will make you put it on your shelf is the fact that it's based on like folklore beliefs and, like traditional like mexico uh, mexican superstition i'm not going to bother pointing out the cover but come on have you seen this masterpiece <laughs> I mean, even if you don't like the book and I don't see a reason for you not to, I think it's pretty good. You should add it to your shelf just based on the cover. Like, let's be honest, it's gorgeous. September, call me by your name. I don't think I even need to tell you about the description because is there anyone in the book community who hasn't heard of this book and or of the movies? For me, my favorite part was the atmosphere, but also Asimund's writing, and I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. I'm sorry, I'm really bad with names and with pronunciations. Time in the story just flowed differently, and I also adored how everything just kind of felt really realistic, but also suspended in the moment. It had this youthful feeling, like when in Perks of Being a Wallflower, Charlie says he feels infinite, but that's also not exactly it, because he feels like free from the restraints and from the kind of trauma of his childhood and all of that and call me by your name in a sense the protagonists do feel the same but also it's slightly different because of the way that everything is set and also because of the spice that the writing adds to it call me by your name is a really great read especially during the summer october i did a thriller readathon with my friend sophia and we also did a wrap up so link in the description box it's hard to choose a favorite we pretty much read only thrillers and they weren't really super special i didn't rate like all of them five stars it was a difficult choice it was like four three point five yeah i would have to choose the complete works of edgar Allan poe tales and poems the complete works so yeah as much as i didn't really care for his poems his short stories just are just like stuck in my head since reading his works i've participated in a writing competition inspired by his style i've also bought myself a pin and proceeded to annoy everyone in school with the pin uh van girled over that but in all seriousness people are always like oh my god Edgar Allan Poe it's so serious it's a classic you have to like have to go deep in it you can't enjoy it you know you have to like analyze and stuff blah 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 no most of my favorites from this collection were the amusing ones but also the really random ones so as much as I like Poe other things especially in the telltale heart it doesn't have to be all about that like for example there's this one story about this guy who kept swearing at his wife calling her names basically insulting her and then one day he like lost his breath so he couldn't breathe anymore but he was still alive so then he got on this bus and he was traveling but then this but then this guy sat on him because he thought he was dead. It's weird, I know. Then they tossed him out of the bus because they were like, oh my god, look, a corpse is sitting on the bus. No, we can't do that. This is just like... Um, yeah, so they threw the corpse out of the bus. Then he like rolled around, whatever. He got to the graveyard. He started having this whole conversation with this corpse, with this other corpse because yeah, technically. It was entertaining. So seriously, great stories, just really interesting. So whoever tells you that, like, 
at your info is all for like those people who are really classics and whatever and it's all about the tale to your heart and analyzing every single word he says no i think sometimes you just need to enjoy the stories because they're just fantastic and they really stick in your head and bro he's really good at writing descriptions about these if you know what i mean november ah uh, another month mm -hmm. another month that i did a wrap up for and by the way that wrap up looks a lot more christmasy than this one now because that one was during the evening um november is going to make me cry because it's really hard to but hey there's apparently 11 months in the year remember let's go crazy a book i really like little life link to my review in the bio poetry book i love the fleur du mal it was a really great way to brighten up school time did i read it between doing some of the work yes i did but don't tell anyone it's really a secret a favorite classic picture of dorian gray link to my study guide box wait what link to my study guide in the description box finally a book i really loved but didn't think I would enjoy is Kafka on the Shore. Sorry to be your basic booktuber. Yep, me calling out everyone after like two months on this platform. But like, yeah, the story was weird, but the metaphors would keep me high for like a month. Kids do books. Motivation from Polina. You're yearly motivation we're at the end of this huge wrap-up and i feel like i've relived the entire reading year which i think is really cool i should do this more often just like go over all the books i read and stuff so plans for next year a lot of exciting new things coming soon so one of the things that i did was i was working on this really cool bookstagram planner for 2021 and i've had some feedback and it was really positive so i'm excited to show you that i will let you know how that goes i will like Link it out sometime in January. Another plan I have to do is make a reading journal for all the books I read in the month. So as a wrap up, I'll just do my stuff. <laughs> and also this thought of just like drawing and like writing about 10 books a month on paper is kind of scary. But I think it will make for like aesthetic videos and I will enjoy it. It's good for me and for my mental health. Another thing is I'm doing like a book POV TikTok thing. Check out my account. It's at the book reviewing box. I'll link the TikTok in the description box. So yeah, I got my media friend to help me out with the TikTok POVs. My first one is on Addie LaRue. I'm really nervous about putting it out there, but please do consider supporting. I really do try my best to make them good, and it's it's looking it's at least looking interesting, you know? The amount of times you've said interesting in this video, but seriously, like the books here top tier my final plan is to work on my content of so many cool things that i could introduce to you and obviously another plan is i want to grow here in book too see if i can make enough money myself to enough money to buy myself an ebook one day and they're not that expensive compared to a book they're like three dollars also by the way i've linked my amazon wishlist in the description box please don't feel obligated to get me anything but if you are checking it out thank you so much but reading is a hobby of mine so i don't really care if i monetize this platform for me it's more about the connections that i make with you guys on the way but it would be nice to kind of get something i love aka a book which kind of relates to this with the money that i make from this you know i don't want to like be dependent on my parents all the time that's just a little goal of mine it's better to have great content so i'm working on that and i hope you enjoy it how has your reading month gone by thank you for staying and watching until the end please do tell me in the comments and for now i'm going into a little stay-at-home holiday until january so see you then and happy new year